Welcome to this week's weekly Pan-African News Roundup on the Kenta Business Journal. Here we serve you with all the major news headlines across Africa and the African diaspora. My name is Rahel Akusari Upuku. In today's headlines, Africa's largest oil refinery has been commissioned in Lagos, Nigeria. China will have access to Ghana's mineral revenue and electricity sales in default of four loans, says the IMF. And Botswana is demanding for a greater share in diamond profits with diamond giant De Beers. Now the news in details. Nigeria's President Mamoudou Buhari on Monday commissioned an oil plant built as Africa's largest oil refinery. Built by Africa's richest person Ali Kudangote in the commercial hub of Lagos in Nigeria, the refinery should begin operations in June with the first products expected on the market by August. Once at full capacity, it will have the ability to process 650,000 barrels a day according to the company. Buhari, who stepped down on May 29 after eight years in office, described the project as a notable milestone and a game changer for the down stream petroleum products market, not only in Nigeria but for the entire African continent. The refinery is expected to meet Nigeria's domestic demand as well as serve global markets for creating more than 100,000 jobs. The International Monetary Fund has reviewed details about how Ghana's four collateralized loans from China have exposed the country to losing part of its mineral resource revenue in addition to electricity sales in the event a default. According to the fund, Ghana's collateralized debt as of the end of 2022 was entirely held by China. This corresponds to four loan agreements signed between 2007 and 2018 that amount to $619 million to finance infrastructure projects. These loans are collateralized against commodity production and electricity sales. The loan argument means in the event Ghana defaults on annual its debt obligation, China has the right to use proceeds for Ghana's oil, cocoa, bauxite or even the sales from electricity to settle the debt. The government of Ghana is expected to submit Ghana's economic program with the IMF to Parliament for consideration through a memorandum. Responding to concerns that the program could face some challenges after the administrative government that took the country to the IMF leaves office in 2024, Resident Representative of the IMF, Dr. Leandro Medina, disclosed that before the program was approved by the Executive Board, an IMF mission engaged various stakeholders, saying a memorandum will be prepared by government and later sent to Parliament, mainly explaining a new financing from the IMF has arrived and how it will be used. He added the IMF was informed that the program was also captured in the 2023 budget. He however expressed worry about Ghana's low tax levels in relation to the tax GDP ratio which is below 20%. President Mugwichi Masisi of Botswana has taken aim at the long-standing partnership with Diamond Giants De Beers, vowing not to settle for anything less than an improved argument. The current deal, set to expire next month, grants Botswana a 25% share of Rob Diamond mined under the partnership, while De Beers retains the majority. Negotiations for a pact renewal are underway, with Botswana pushing for a higher stake in the profit. The Botswana Diamond Company, jointly owned by Botswana and De Beers, is responsible for the extra of these precious stones. Botswana supplies 70% of the best rough diamonds, emphasizing the country's significant role in the diamond industry. Although Tanzania's foreign exchange reserves have decreased by $600 million during the past year, the administration insists there is no cause for concern and the country's future is still promising. The Monetary Policy Committee reports that as of the end of April 2023, foreign exchange reserves are valued at $4.9 billion from the $5.5 billion that was recorded at the end of April 2022. This represented a decrease of over 11%. Despite the decline, the Monetary Policy Committee, which is led by the Governor of the Bank of Tanzania notes that the level of reserves was still adequate to fund imports for 4.4 months, which is within the required minimum of at least four months for the nation. The government of Ghana has received $150 million in additional financing for the Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project from the World Bank to improve flood risk management and solid waste management for over 2.5 million people in the Adore River Basin of the Greater Accra region. 
According to Pierre Lapore, World Bank Country Director for Ghana, Liberia and Sierra Leone, the World Bank is committed to help contribute to a holistic flood management approach through this additional financing of the Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project. According to him, the Gastra is critical to achieving the World Bank's twin goals of ending extreme poverty and boosting shared prosperity as well as increasing the resilience of African cities. The International Monetary Fund said on Tuesday that it agreed to a $1 billion loan for Kenya to deal with its liquidity and economic difficulties. In an attempt to reduce a debt of about $70 billion, the government has prepared a budget including many new taxes that are expected to raise €2 billion Euros to supplement the €24 billion Euros budget plan for 2023 and 2024. These arguments need to be validated by the IMF's executive board, which meets in July. If approved, Kenya will have immediate access to 410 10 million according to the IMF. In a statement issued on Tuesday, the financial institution said its commitment to Kenya would be increased to a total of $3.52 billion. Morocco will center the global tech community's attention on Africa's united commitment to advancing the digital economy next week, converging the best minds from government, businesses, big tech, startups, investors and youths to accelerate and catalyze the continent's ambitious digital transformation journey. GitX Africa 2023, now the largest tech and startup show in the African continent, will make its highly anticipated debut from 31st May to 2nd June with the final preparations. GitX Africa is the largest business event launch of any industry in the Middle East and Africa in recent years and is affiliated with GitX Global in Dubai, the world's largest tech and startup show rated by global tech executives as the world's best global tech event. Held under the high patronage of Master Kim Mohamed V, GitX Africa is hosted by the Digital Development Agency under the authority of the Moroccan Ministry of Digital Transition and Administration Reform. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Kente Business Journal TV, and press the notification bell to stay updated always.